our next step on this guitar is we are going to attach our bridge, uh, also the nut, and we'll get our saddle as well. So we'll get all those from the teacher here and we'll show you how to get them attached to our guitar. And so if you take your nut bone over to the top part of that fretboard, right where it's gonna be placed, you'll notice that first off, it's a little bit oversized. So we're gonna trim that to the size that we need to. Um, and then also we're going to notch out, if needed, that little slot just right at the top part of our fretboard. Notch that, that quarter inch for that nut to fit into. Line up one side just perfectly flush and just go ahead and mark the other side right where we're gonna cut it. We want to leave your line for sure and maybe even an extra 16th or even an eighth of an inch. Sometimes it chips this bone as we're cutting it. And we'll just sand it down to the line after. Okay, just come over to that vertical belt sander and you can just bump that uh, nut bone into the sander until you get right down to your line. Okay, now we need to put a curved edge on this nut bone here. It's just on the back edge, we're just gonna go and just sand the back side just curved. So if you take one of these wooden hand screw clamps, lay that nut bone down flat, see if you can just clamp just on the tip of it, just to hold it, and then we'll use the same vertical belt sander just to kind of round over that back edge. Just kind of tip that vertically back and forth. We're just doing a really slight round over. So we're just rounding it over, trying to get that profile where it's rounded there. Now we can also just take a random orbit sander or sand by hand and smooth this and shape it. You just want a consistent little curve just on that back edge. Just shaping that, trying to get it smooth. Go ahead and just test fit where that nut's gonna go. And we'll just trace on the back edge of that nut where we're gonna notch out for that to just fit right in. So if you just trace that back edge right on the head plate. And right where that line's at, we're gonna go and just take a back saw and notch that out in a chisel and just get that to fit. Okay, to notch this out, again, just go ahead and get a back saw. And we're gonna get a wood chisel as well, a little quarter inch wood chisel. But I like to set up some kind of fence or something. If you just even just take a clamp and put the edge of that clamp right where your line's at, and then just kind of squeeze that clamp tight, that'll give us a little fence or edge to keep that saw against while we're cutting this. And you want to keep the saw straight up and down relative to the top of the fretboard here. So don't angle your clamp. That should be straight up and down parallel with the top of that. Short little pullback motions at first until you get a line established. And you're just holding that saw just nice and tight up against that edge of that fence. Now, as far as how deep you're going, you only want to go through just that head plate. Don't go down into your neck, obviously. We're just going to take a quarter inch chisel and just remove all the little excess in the middle there. Take your time on this. Be careful not to hold the board where, you know, in front of the chisel. Always have your hands behind the chisel. Okay, check to see if that nut bone fits in that slot. If it doesn't, you can always notch a little bit more with the chisel. This one looks to fit just fine. And then we'll go ahead and just super glue that in. I would just take some super glue here and just put the glue in the slot. You're gonna put it down in that slot and then also up against the edge that the nut bone is gonna go up against on that fretboard. Take some masking tape or something after and tape it on there just so it stays still. Just want this to be nice and straight. Left side, right side, equal distance. We'll just kind of tape it in place and let it dry. After that nut bone is 
glued on there. We're gonna go ahead and get the bridge and get that placed on the guitar where it needs to go. The placement of this bridge is extremely important that we get it dead on accurate. And so what we need to identify is that 12th fret, and that's the one with the double dot. It's that fret wire right below those. And we're gonna find the distance between the 12th fret and the very front of the nut. We'll measure that distance. And then we're also gonna measure that same distance from the 12th fret to our saddle. And that needs to be exactly the same amount. Now we wanna make sure we're right in the very center of that 12th fret with that tape measure there, just right on top of the 12th fret. And it looks like this is 12 and 3 fourths of an inch distance. So we're gonna go measure 12 and 3 fourths. Again, measuring from that 12th fret to the saddle. And we need to just position that saddle right at the 12 and 3 fourths mark. And we're making sure it's the very middle part of the saddle because the saddle's angled slightly, but it's also the very front edge where the strings first touch the saddle. That's where that needs to be placed at. So again, this needs to be extremely accurate. Top of the 12th fret to the very front part of the saddle needs to be the same distance that it is from the 12th fret to the edge of the nut. Once we get that position, we'll just go ahead and put a little small pencil line right in front of that bridge so we can match that back up. The other thing we need to do is get our position left and right accurate. So how we're going to do that, just go ahead and get an extra string. And we're just going to stretch that string across. We'll just go from maybe where that uh, first string touches that nut. And we'll place it across right where the string would go into the hole of the bridge. And we're just kind of looking at how it runs across that fretboard. And then we're going to do the same exact measurement from the last or bottom string there. Line that up, again, place it where it needs to be over there. And we're looking, again, how much space we have between the string and the edge of the fretboard. And we're making sure the space between the string and the edge of this fretboard match the same as what it was up here. And if it's not, we can shift that bridge up or down until we get that right on. And so just do some small little adjustments, take a look at both, keep that string tight as you do this. And you're just gonna position that bridge until your little gap spacing is exactly the same on both sides. We wanna make sure that that string isn't shifted weird left or right as we're doing this. All right, so we got that positioned and then we're gonna go ahead and maybe take a pencil and just mark the corners here so that if we lift up this bridge, we can place it exactly in the same spot that we had. Just small light pencil lines, we'll sand these off later. We can see our one line there and then the two corners where to line this back up when we go to attach it. That should be the exact spot we need to attach this. Okay, before we glue the bridge on, let's make sure our saddle is the right length. Right now, that little slot that it fits into, your saddle's just a little bit longer than what that is. And so just take a pencil and just mark where it needs to fit. Head over to that bandsaw and just chop the length, leave it a little bit long and then sand it down to your line. So that saddle just drops right down in. Perfect. When we go to glue this bridge on, let's go ahead and remove the saddle just so it's not in the way and you can just set that aside and save it for later. But do what let's call the dry fit first when we go to attach this. We're gonna throw some clamps on here, some special clamps that reach through the sound hole to clamp this on. But it's a good idea to definitely try this with no glue, get it positioned just to see what it's like. Once we're comfortable, we'll go ahead and throw glue on that and then clamp it. Okay, I have these special clamps here that just reach through the sound hole. Ideally, we wanna get two clamps on here. If it's tricky with two, we can get away with just one, but we'll try to get two. Line up, again, this is with no glue. We're just getting our bridge positioned where it needs to be. And with these clamps, you gotta be really careful not to ding up your sound hole or anything like that. So be careful as you insert that through the sound hole. And on the opposite side of your bridge, underneath there is that bridge patch when we did our bracings. And that's what we're really putting the pressure against. Just 
be careful not to ding up that sound hole. So watch that clamp that it doesn't hit the front. The tension on these can be adjusted if needed and you can get my help if it's needed to be adjusted, but that's a pretty good dry fit. We got it lined up right where it needs to go, right on those little marks. Now we get brave, we're gonna put some glue on it and clamp it up. When you put the glue on this bridge, we don't wanna have glue all the way to the edge. Maybe leave yourself a, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, eighth of an inch before you get to the edge. And you can just spread that glue around, but we don't want it to come all the way to the edge. Otherwise, when you clamp that on, you get a bunch of glue squeeze out and it's kind of a hassle to clean up. So get good coverage, but leaving a little bit of dry all the way up to those edges there. And we'll just line it up right between your lines. Now, one thing I like to do before putting the clamps on here, once I get it lined up perfectly where it needs to be, is I just hold it by hand for maybe 15, 20 seconds with some pressure on it. This will help so that glue doesn't slip and slide as much. But you're just kind of holding it in place by hand. Then we're gonna throw the clamps on it. I realize that when you start getting some pressure, that bridge might move on you a little bit. So you just gotta be aware and ready because that glue is gonna let it be a little more slippery. And if you need to, get another person to help hold things in place while you throw the clamp pressure on. So if it shifted, you can see our line and it shifted from that, loosen the pressure, kind of push it back where it needs to be and then we'll get the pressure again on there. Find a helper to do this if you want. Have your helper help hold things in place while you put the pressure on. Remember, you got about maybe five minutes of time to, before that glue starts to really set up. And so if you need to make any adjustments, do so before that glue dries. Okay, we got those clamps on there. It's lined up right where we want it to be. Let that stay and dry for at least 30 minutes. And we got our bridge attached.